So we've got quite a number of conversations on the ground today. But first, let me introduce my panelists. Uh, to my immediate right is Kim Fad Osman. He's a member of the NPP's National Communications Team. And then uh, to his left is Eric Edem Agbana. Uh, he's NDC parliamentary candidate for Ketu North. Uh, pretty shortly, we'll be joined by Solomon Owusu, who is senior communications for the movement for change. But gentlemen, you're welcome to the big issue. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. I, I want to start with issues that have come up in the last, uh, what, six hours or so. We know that uh, Asamwajan has decided that he will no longer be part of uh, <laughs> your campaign team. <laughs> Fad, I'm sure you're very uh, disappointed uh, by that. Well, good morning once again to you and to my brother here and to our viewers this morning. I just saw the news. Mm. I, I don't know the reasons for, for his decisions. Mm. I believe certainly has some reasons. And within, within some few days or within the coming days, mm. we'll get to know why. He, he, he says he's, he made a mistake he, he because decided, he, he thinks that, you know, he should be apolitical for the Ghanaian you know, youth. You know, the political <laughs> space, before that we were discussing, the political space is a bit hostile. Mm -hmm. So if you're not too careful and you jump in and you're not, you're, you're not prepared for it, you might, you might want to pull out. So I think maybe he was not well prepared. You think that's what's happening? Maybe, with him? maybe, because we've seen the backlash uh -huh. after his endorsement and his he joining us on campaign platform. We've seen some backlash and people calling him names. I believe maybe, probably. Well, someone that I know is a very uh, is somebody with a very thick skin. Looking at his blaster days, missing penalties, and all those he had, had to go through. His, his skin and wasn't then, thick at this well, time. I don't know. I don't for know. For MPP so, politics. I don't know. Not for MPP <laughs> politics. For the Ghanaian <laughs> politics. So we wish him well. We wish him well. It was nice working with him. I, I had the opportunity to join him, I think, at the Ophir work mm -hmm. in Honorable Samuel Oku's constituency. And his engagement with party people was very beautiful. So we wish him well. We wish he, were, he, he, he was still with us. But for whatever reasons, we cannot force him to, 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 to be part of politics. Mm. If he had come to realize that it was a mistake for him to, to join the political space, I think it's only fair for him to I for see. Us to allow him to, to go. I see, Adam. This one has nothing to do with your party, but it's only but, fair that uh, you you take a dig at it. Well, let me say good morning to uh, you, our my colleague panelists, and to the viewers, especially the good people of Ketu North. And let me use your platform to say a very big thank you to my people for escorting me to file successfully yesterday. Um, it was massive. In fact, there was a total shutdown in Georgia yesterday, an indication that our target of recording 95% victory for John Dramani Mahama and myself, we will be able to achieve it. We are working hard and uh, until we defeat the NPP with over 95% in Ketu North, we are resting not. Asamwajan, well, um, I'm a football person. <clears throat> Uh, as a football administrator and, 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 and an enthusiast, I have followed many of the Black Stars players, including Asamoah And when he decided to join the NPP's campaign team, um, it did not come as a surprise to some of us because even in the days when he was playing, uh, it was easy for some of us to detect where they belong politically. They are individuals, they are Ghanaians, they have the right to belong to any political party of really? their choice. Really? It was easy, even while he was playing? Uh, uh, yeah. I, could, I, mean, I, I couldn't so have some of us, that. That's what I'm saying, that some of us, mm. same way we can do for some media persons who will appear objective or neutral, but when you get close, you should be able to tell where they belong. So Asamojan has always been MPP. The reason why he's running away this time is because after joining Dr. Baumier's campaign, <laughs> He has realized that uh, it, it, it is never going to but end those, well. those are not the reasons no, 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 he gave no, no, this statement. Are, but I'm telling you, he won't give it. But the truth is that Asamoja knows that he, he's part of a very fruitless venture. Oh. This Dr. Baumia campaign is I, never I, I, going that's, to... That's not what he said. No. That's not what he said. What, what reason did he give? At what he, point he did Asamoja realize that? He's come that? to the realization that no. he's for oh. all he the youth of this youth. country. So it is... Be, let me tell you something. Look, no. This is not politics. But if... Being a member of Dr. Baumier's campaign mm -hmm. is something that will inure to the benefit of the young people. Then he should be there, rather, and push for the interests of the youth. So jumping out Th that's means also that one way their of ideals, their philosophies, the <laughs> principles on which they are building their campaign mm. is not in the interest of the Adam, Ghanaian youth. Adam, so now he says that I'm pulling out <laughs> and to come and fight for the youth. It means that you cannot be there and fight for the youth. 
You cannot be no, there. No, that's, not, that's not what he no, said. But and I've made, made clear what he said. But let, let's, let's, let's introduce uh, Solomon at, at this point <laughs> to join the conversation. Uh, Solomon, Owusu. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon Owusu is a senior comms uh, for Movement for Change. Solomon, you're late, but you're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, and good morning to you and my uh, co-panelists. Uh, as I'm for, uh, for me, I was very surprised when he decided to join the campaign team because if you look at his trajectory he has been a musician a footballer but politics what do you intend to do with politics and i got a sense that he will at, at a point leave the scene when they had the ecropon walk mm. because in the ecropon walk he is supposed to be in charge of the youth uh, uh manifesto or subcommittee of of, sports. Uh, yeah, of sports. youth and sports and when he was given the microphone to speak he was rather telling the people that he asked the vice president what plans he had for the youth. I thought he was going to suggest to the vice president. So clearly, he had, he had no clue as to what he was doing in there. And this kind of populism, people must understand that politics is a different terrain. Concentrate on where you have your strength. You can contribute. It doesn't necessarily have to be by joining the political uh -huh. party. Now that you have soiled yourself, how do you go back to the people and tell them that, you are not MPP. Well, he, he's come back to tell us. So we'll leave it at that and then move on to uh, our, our core topics for the day. Uh, today on our table, we have the Wale Wale uh, rerun uh, primary and how it ended. We know that uh, Larry Bazuera uh, has withdrawn from uh, the, the race, the incumbent member of parliament for Dr. Kabiru Mahama to be the candidate. Obviously, that's where we are headed. And Fad, I, I think I'm, I want to start with you on this one. It would appear that the party failed to nip the problem in the bud when it began uh, in June. And then today, this is where we are. Why? why? Thank you very much. I, I believe what happened in Walwale is a situation we, we are very much concerned. That's the, that's the hometown of our candidates, mm -hmm. the, the leader of our party. So it's, it's an area we have much interest and concern. So, and as democratic processes, it's happened early this year. The contest happened early this year. That was around January this year, mm. where Dr. K Kabiru and the, the incumbent had a contest. It went to court and a whole lot of issues came out of Indeed. it. The court ordered a rerun which happened Monday. And from, the, from, from indications or from, from the information we gathered after the, the, the sorting was that some individuals came in and had to hijack the process. And as a result of that, the police had to come in, take the ballot boxes to the police station for, to, to see if there could be any count of the ballots. And the EC came in out to say that with the tempting of people coming in and its, it's, it's consequences, it would be only fair to have another contest again, or another elections again. Uh -huh. And you know, we have only till Friday for filing of our parliamentary Indeed. and so it is important that some decisions be taken and i'm told this one that our national executive council will be meeting this morning yeah to to have some decisions yeah, but, on but this. Uh, i had yala Riba has already Interestingly, taken and the... last, uh, last night the information came out that she has decided to pull out but that does not make doctor the candidate. but that's where we could be headed that's the point. so that's the, I, I, and, and i want yeah. you to explain that but i mean before then uh, there are those who are saying that listen for the incumbent member of parliament who, to decide to withdraw, then it means that some pressures have come from I within know. the uh, high echelons of the party. I, I, Why I, did you pressure the woman I, I to step I don't out? think that's, that's true. I don't think that's true. It's a contest. You see, elections, when you're going for elections, it's important that you understand and study what is happening. To, to an extent, you can even tell on the day of elections that, well, I've campaigned, I've done everything. But from what is happening this morning, it's not going to end well for me. Sometimes it's possible for you to know. The same person who went to Sometimes it's, it's possible. See, on the day of sorting, if you hear the story so far, they were almost done with, I think, 500 and something votes sorted. And you could tell who is winning the elections. So it is not, it is not out of On place. the day of sorting? Sorting, on you Monday. You mean for this rerun? It's for, for, on the Monday. So you mean Lariba was losing? I am not saying this. But then what but are then, you saying? Then, but then the concerns were that okay. from the sorted ballot so far, people could easily tell who, who was winning the elections. So I believe maybe out of that, she felt it's only fair for the interest of the party. Let me pull out. For this thing what happened January this year, we went to court, a real round happened Monday, and still we couldn't come to a conclusion. So I think maybe she being the, the, the incumbent, felt that four years is enough for me. So what is so big deal if I want to pull out at this point? I don't think anybody will have to pressure her. 
She's big. She's, she's a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. So I don't think anybody in our party want to put some pressure on her. No. She, in the interest of the party, she decided to pull out and thanked her people for giving her the opportunity to serve them for four years. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. So I think we should accept it in that order and allow the processes to continue because we have to, from today to Friday, to, to, to file a, a candidate mm -hmm. for Walwale. If not, we are out of the contest in Walwale parliamentary elections. I see. So it is important this morning our party will have a meeting. A decision will be made on who to who to lead us in Walwale. As, as I speak, Dr. K K Dr. Kebi is not a candidate but yet. But he's the only, uh, you know... That's the point. So the decision will be made... Nominee or aspirant nominee as, at this as point. Stand now. Yeah. So I believe by the close of today, a decision will be made at the party's highest office. And we will know where they way forward from there. Probably tomorrow we'll be able to file the parliamentary candidate for Wale Wale. I see. So, the Solomon, office. a quick bite on that and then we'll move on to Adam. Yes, it's unfortunate uh, how the party, uh, my former party, has uh, decided to sink this law. Uh, Wale Wale, that hitherto was a very peaceful constituency, is becoming uh, a, a scene that nobody could imagine. You remember during the internal primaries of the MPP, uh, MPP the superdelegates, that was a constituency where an agent for Mr. Lanchamantin, Ali Zakaria, was beaten to pulp. Uh, he was mercilessly butchered. Uh, at that time, when we told the, uh, the, the, the party that they had to be very cautious and careful with that constituency, they thought we were overreacting. A day to this whole run, rerun, the same incident happened. Blood all over. Now we are told that after elections and during sorting, one gentleman by name Kamara Bawa, who happens to be the former chairman of Yagaba Kabori, was bold enough, in spite of the presence of more than 100 police personnel, fully armed, was able to go and snatch ballot and chew ballot papers. As we speak, we are told that he is behind bars, but I, I can assure you that that will not be the situation. So me, I'm not even interested in whether or not uh, Larba has withdrawn. I mean, it's obvious that I listened to her that she was not pressed. It's not true. Mm -hmm. What were you doing in court? Why, what were you doing in mm -hmm. the rerun? And mind you, as you speak, it has not been confirmed that she lost. Yeah. Pressures have come from somewhere, and she has realized that, hey, I will be mentioned as the name or as the person that took her party or uh, uh, led to a defeat in that constituency. So let me back up and allow Kabiru to go. But either way, I am not interested in who is going to win over there. Uh, I wish the best candidate to win. Mm. At the end of the day, it is about the violent nature and also the ability of Kamara Bawa to go and snag ballot. And that must give you an indication as to the kind of strategy the new patriotic party intends to adopt in election 2024. How so? But he has, you know, it's a pilot. <laughs> they are pilot. Wale, wale, wale it's a pilot. pilot. Mm. Either than that, how was Kamara able to bully and penetrate into the police force? Now the EC is telling you that he doesn't want to have anything to do with the elections anymore. But they organized the elections. No, they didn't say they don't have, don't want to have anything to do. They have, they, they have, have advised. Which advice? What to do. There was an electoral officer there who is saying, that, "Look, NPP, come and take your matter. I'm not interested." Well, well of course, at that point when the violence broke out. Of no, course. no. They, he said he doesn't have, want to have anything to do with no, the but, elections. But what I'm saying mm -hmm. is that the National Office of the Electoral Commission have advised on how, how to proceed post the inconclusive election. So, so, so it is, so. it is not true that they have said that they won't touch the election. What are anymore. they talking about? They ran an election. They organized an election. The election was supervised by the Electoral Commission. That was the case. Mm -hmm. As we speak, they have not been able to determine who won the elections. Now the Electoral Commission has. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Refer the matter to the uh, NPP to take a, de a, a decision on it. So what they are telling you is that they are no more interested in the matter. That's your interpretation of that. But that is what it is. So what I'm saying is that this must give every Ghanaian a cause to worry. Mm -hmm. That an electoral commission that was sent to a place to organize an election has run away, number one. Number two, there is this chap called Kamara Bawa that we all know mm -hmm. was able to go and snag ballot. And as we speak, we are, we are yet to hear whether he's been prosecuted and taken to court. 
What will happen during election 2024? We know one person has been arrested in all of this. And so, but, but Fad, at some point you have to tell us what is, it is with the NPP and snatching of ballot paper. Because we, we saw it in Parliament as well. Oh, my, my, that, but, that, but Adam, go ahead. Camille, let, let me say uh, good morning to the incoming member of Parliament for Wale Wale, the Honorable Abu Bakar Abdallah. We in the NDC, after a number of surveys conducted, mm -hmm. are convinced that our candidates will win the parliamentary elections and President Mahama will win the Wale Wale constituency in these 2024 elections. And so uh, we did not really bother much what was happening in the camp of the NPP in Wale Wale because regardless of who they present, even if they present Dr. Baumia himself oh, as the, uh, the, the parliamentary candidate of the NPP in Wale Wale. I can assure you that uh, Honorable Abu Bakar Abdallah uh, is in poor position to win the constituency. But the withdrawal, the withdrawal of the MP uh, brings a number of issues to the table. Number one, Wale Wale is the home constituency of the presidential candidate of the NPP, the vice president of this republic. And let it be on record that he has a relationship, a familial or he is related, directly related to the honorable member of parliament. Yes. So they are related. So for his inability to show leadership, yes. for his inability to resolve a very simple this very simple issues surrounding the primaries that they conducted yes. almost six or seven months ago should tell us something about the leadership credentials of the vice president yes. because that is his home constituency uh. and he allowed all these issues to persist for all this while number two the fact that she has withdrawn must not let us forget about the chaos and the violence that marred the elections on Sunday. And you see, we in the NDC have always complained about the violent nature of the NPP. And that is why our national chairman keeps saying that if you are looking for peace in the 2024 elections, you must be ready as a stakeholder to ensure that there is justice. So there was violence on Saturday, a uh, Sunday. There was shooting by 9 a.m. where those who shot into the crowd or shot into the air got their weapons from. Till today, the police has not even released a statement about it. Uh -huh. As we speak, nobody has been arrested and prosecuted for these shootings. There is also an incident of ballot snatching. That is their character. Almost every election of the NPP is marred by violence and snatching of ballots. So they can do it internally. We saw what happened in Yendi. And what is happening in Wale Wale, the home constituency of the vice president speaks volumes uh -huh. about his leadership credentials. Because uh -huh. as the flag bearer, and somebody who is even related to the member of parliament, he should have been able to bring the situation under control. Again, ask yourself, what were the charges or what issues pushed Hajia to court? She alleged that there was fraud in the register that was used. And so even though she lost the elections to Kabiru, who even works in the vice president's office, and so... That for the vice president's inability to resolve the issue, it speaks volumes because Kabiru works in his office uh -huh. as one of his aides. Yes, yes. And you are directly related to the MP. She is your sister, direct sister. And, and, and he was unable to do anything about this problem. And you in the MPP would think that you can present this man as a credible leader. Now, back to the issue of the register. And I'm sure we'll be discussing the issue or the issues that the NDC is raising about the audit. Because the only reason why Hajia went to court is that she alleged fraud in the, in the register. And so even though she lost the initial or the first election, uh -huh. she went to court and got the court 
to order for a rerun. And that is where we are today. That MPP believes that when you have issues with the register, you must speak about it because there are serious issues. And so when we get to the discussion yeah. on the but, register... But Adam, I'm failing we'll, we'll to see how there. you are linking the M NPP's register to your concerns, yes, your party's we, we, we concerns should. about the, uh, the national register. Yeah, because the, the credibility of an election depends on the processes. You know, election is not an event. Mm. And so if you prepare a register for elections and the register is fraudulent, such that as we speak today, you, Kemini, you can walk to your polling station and to your surprise, your name is not in the register because somebody at the Electoral Commission has decided to manipulate by transferring you to my constituency. And so you walk into your polling station at Ayala so West, your name is not in the register, and you are informed that you have been transferred to Ketu North. Mm. And, and so that's... W when we get there, we'll yes. have a deeper conversation So, so it's, it's, a, it's a very important issue that we must, we must talk about. Absolutely. So let me conclude Quick. that the Wale Wale issues in the NPP, we are not concerned. But the vice president's failure to show leadership in this issue yeah. speaks volumes about him. But we are confident that Abu Bakr Abdallah and the NDC in Wale Wale will do everything possible to win the seat for us in uh, this election. Fad, my guess is that you do not see how Edem and Solomon have both connected this whole issue and put it at the doorstep of the vice president. It's, it's very interesting why I find Edem makes those conclusions. This is an election. Mm -hmm. The vice president has no role to play in these processes. So how do you tell me that the vice president, as the leader of the party, coming from the area, has failed in this regard? It's so interesting. But I don't blame him. This is one of the strategies. Anything that happens in this country, let's find a way to smuggle in the name of the vice president and, sh and blame well, him. I'm, I'm not sure the concern is And, and this, is is the, this is the point. It's an election, uh -huh. right? <laughs> and every constituency in this country had its fair share of the elections, right? So if we get, we get to Wale Wale and there are problems, you tell me that the vice president should come in, call the incumbent, call the Dr. K, and tell him that, no, this is, my home, this is my hometown, so please pull out from the contest. Is that democracy? Is that what Adam is trying to no, preach I, this I don't think. No, I don't think so that's the, what the, the point they have made. The point no, they have made the is the violence that came along the with you the see, elections. See, don't ask see, me what, what was the see, violence. That's, you know that's what the, happened. That's the hypocrisy in the discussions this morning. Okay. I have witnessed. Mm -hmm. Adam sits here and talks about violence in MPP. Adam, wow, that's very interesting. Because we know very well, your people. We know very well. We know on record. The former president Muhammad told us in this country that nobody beats them when it comes to violence. I'm, I never said this. That's not when? Said. Former Wait, President no. Muhammad said this. That's, that's when? Not said. He never when said was that? that? Ah, he never said that. No, he never no, said no, that. No, no, hang on. He never said that. Gentlemen, hang that. on. I want I you to remind us. Yes. When, when, when did he say that? When and where? I give you the date exactly. And but where, where did he say it? Adam, Adam, are you uncomfortable now? <laughs> no, no, no. I are you uncomfortable Adam, Adam, hold on. I'm still quietly watching you. Okay, so you back up. You know everywhere. Okay, no problem. Where were those comments made? When it comes to violence, nobody beats them when it comes to the with the NDC. This were his words. And we also know on record. That the end is not long ago, the national elections. We, we witnessed the kind of violence that where? came along with it. Which where we had elections? even members of the NDC being listed as wanted by the Ghana Police Service. I know some of these members oh. who were listed as at that time. Which, we saw the videos. This the, year? The, not last year. The NDC national elections. The general secretary and the... What's the name of... Well, you, I hope you know that man. Who, who is that? <laughs> no, you have to, you have to general, say general name, Mosquito, an... General Mosquito. Uh -huh. Right? The kind of violence that accompanied their internal elections. We also know, as if you go to the Hafu region, Collins, now there's younger brother, Naba. We know the kind of violence he mounted onto our people in oh, those areas. So, so if this morning, if this morning, this, Adams, this conveniently, conveniently. Adam, hang on, oh, you Adam, have your Adam, time, Adam, to, time to make, I, I think no to throw all you these have your, issues. your time to, yeah, no to I'm from the Bunu region, <laughs> and I've witnessed the violence being mounted on us in the Bunu region. So Adam, this morning, in as much as we do condemn what happened on Monday, we do condemn it. Adam should not try and draw in the vice president just because he wants to score some political points this morning. I see. And to make him look like he's the devil in the, in the constituency. And he's the one causing, he's looking at something. He said the incumbent is his sister. Uh -huh. Dr. KB is his uh, secretary. Or his, the staff. Is, is, are those not true? That's a fact. Uh -huh. So in this situation, the only thing he has to do is he has to allow the democratic processes to take its effect. And that's what he did. So beyond that, I find it very difficult 
for to hear Adam this morning. And my brother here, you see, I don't blame my brother because he was part of us. And because he has now parted ways, he always, he always, he always, he always, he always, he always find it very convenient to attack his home, for what former family. What is this? I don't have any problem. No, why, why do you see that as an attack? I mean, oh, no, he's, one, he's he spoken his opinion he on the happenings. He, he, managed, no, Solomon, he managed to bring in the presidential primaries with Alan and Dr. Baumia. That's where he started his premises from. And along the way, he tried to condemn the MP. No, but Fad, you can't tell him yes, how he I, should I analyze the issue. Oh, I don't have any problem with that. Right. But I'm glad you don't have a problem. So let me come in at this yes, point. So right? the Just two things. Let me, two, end on two things. let me end on this. You see, what happened was very unfortunate. We've condemned it. Our general secretary yesterday made a statement that those involved will, will be prosecuted. We're not going to sh give them any cover that because it's an internal issues, let's cover them from prosecution. No. They are, they are, I believe, two or three people, as we speak, as currently. Uh, 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 under arrest, as uh -huh. we speak. And the processes will take its effect. So please, we should allow it. And we should not try and bring in all these pedestrian issues of Dr. Baumia ba being I the see. cause and the problem uh, and uh, leadership. No, I don't think anybody has said he's that's what, the that's cause what he did. That's what he did. He, but but, but he, he yes, 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 my follow up to, to all, right. all that you all have right. said, right? The first one being it is only leadership norm that when crises come around elections, yes. while you have a flag bearer, we expect the flag bearer to take a leadership role and intervene, not in the elections, but in the violence that could come around the elections. That is what the people say, and not just Edem and Solomon, that the vice president failed to do. Reason why today one person has been arrested, and you have just updated us that three people have been arrested. Yes. That is the concern. Do you see that as well? I, I would say this. This was a purely a democratic process. The first phase of the elections happened January this year, the incumbent felt peeved. She went to court. And it, within, within this process, you don't, you don't expect the vice president as the leader to come in. And the court gave a ruling. No, I don't and think you're getting I'm that getting, I'm, I'm ending on Monday. The court gave a ruling. And the ruling was that let's have a rerun, which happened on Monday. And unfortunately, it didn't end well. The violence didn't so, begin on Monday. It didn't start or end on Monday. <laughs> it began with the original primary in that constituency. And, what and, did and, your leader, and, the flag bearer, the see, vice president, see, do about this in his see, home turf, especially? See, it was important, and I think he has kept, he has played a very a, a neutral role in this particular is, in, in, instance. Kabiru is his secretary or his advisor, technical advisor, and the incumbent is a sister. So the best he could have done was to stay away, allow the Please hmm. allow the democratic process to take its effect. The lady went to court, incumbent went to court, a ruling was made. Every run was asked, asked to take effect on Monday. It happened, unfortunately. Hmm. It ended what happened, it didn't happened. End well. And today, we've seen a statement from the incumbent saying that I'm pulling out of this contest. We should accept it and give her the benefit of doubt. And I, one thing she stated in the letter was that she thanks her people for giving her the four year mandate, which is enough for her. So if Overnight, she has sat back and to understand that four years is enough for me. I want to pull out. What's the big deal here? Mm, I see. We should not but, blame others. So, so on the on the other point, just before you, you come in, much. Solomon, the other point is you you seem to go through the equalization route anytime somebody questions, you know, why there there is so much violence around Wali Wali. Why? See, you, you, you forget that you were brought into office for a change. I am not equalizing it in a, in a, in the direction of change or not changing. But the point is that. Moral right is very, very important. Before you condemn others, you first have to check yourself. What moral right do I have in condemning you? I so Adam lacks the moral right when it comes to violence to condemn others. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm. So I was only trying to remind him, if probably he had forgotten, that in this country, we have the history and have the records. We I have 22,000. So, so, so the Ghanaian people then have the right to question the violence that is see, associated not, with this election. We are not. We are not uh, we've condemned. No, let's violence. just say it's you not. See, it, no, no. You know, Adam can, does not have the you moral see, right. The Ghanaian people you see, do. You see, we condemn it. We've condemned it. We don't wish it happens again. We are trying to have a free and fair elections. It's important. And I've said this before. We've gone through the opaque ballot box days. We've gone through where people will be intimidated with arms and guns. In my constituency, uh -huh. there are areas you, don't, you can't even go on election day as an MPP member. We've gone through all those days. We are moving towards a democracy where if Adam contesting today in these elections, he can sit back in his home and say that, yes, I trust the process. And whatever happens at the end of the day, I can accept the results. We should start looking into the future. Then we we'll have to come blame ourselves. You see, it's unfair and very unfortunate we have to blame ourselves the same way. But the point is that people have to at least understand 
that you need to have some certain moral grounds before you can condemn others. But if you like it, please add them. Let's take our time when we are condemning others. That's what I'm trying to say. You, you get the point. So that's all. Add yeah. them quickly. Yeah. 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 I, think that, I think that the uh, fad, fad. If you want us to get into a discussion on, on violence, right after him. If you want us to get into a discussion on, on violence, you in the NPP cannot, cannot, and do not even have the no, moral no, right no, to start. No, no, We're talking you're, about you're, we're you're, talking about Wale Wale. Thank you. And I am telling you that me, my focus. I will respond to him, but my focus is that the vice president has failed to show leadership in managing an internal affairs in his own constituency. And that is a serious issue. Are you aware? And I didn't want to get into all of this. Are you aware that the vice president and his assigns tried to impress on Kabiru to withdraw from the contest even before January 2024? For which reason he was sacked from the vice president's office? Are you aware? When was the last time Kabiru was seen working from the vice president's office? Simply because somebody feels that I am the presidential candidate and the vice president. My system has not been contested. And so if you are even talking about issue of democratic principles or allowing democracy to work, we don't even go there. Because Dr. Baumia sacked Kabiru from his office because Kabiru decided to represent his people or to go into parliament and contest against Dr. Baumia's uh, uh, sister. Number two, when Hajia went to court, when she went to court, the party released the state initially. The party, which was the, the second defendant, decided to take her on for not exhausting the internal processes of the party before proceeding to court. Why? Which higher authority spoke before the party decided not to embark on that action again? It is certainly the vice president and his office. Number three, Hajia did not withdraw because she wanted to give way to peace. As we speak today, Today is 11 September, Wednesday. We are expected to file by 13th, which is Friday. And why did the election become inconclusive? It is because they snatched a ballot box. And so for the party to reorganize another election, they realized it was practically impossible. So finally, whichever higher authority may have intervened now mm -hmm. to get her, the same higher authority that supported her throughout from January till today has decided that Let's look at the fact that we may not even get a candidate at all. And in your comment, you said that even with her withdrawal, it means Kabiru, it does not mean that Kabiru, Kabiru is, a is a candidate. Because, because I didn't want to get into it. As we speak, even with her withdrawal, there are people close to the vice president who are still against Kabiru, such that some are even lobbying for the former MP to be made a compromised candidate. Mm. You see... There are issues, then you you know I better. See. But like I said, I didn't no, want no, to no, get. No, 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 hang on. You no, have no, no. you have your fact. I didn't no, want to fact. get into the issues because for me, <laughs> as, a, as as an NDC member, we are happy that our candidate, Honorable Abu Bakar Abdallah, is working so hard, and he will win the elections. He will win the seat for us. But let's not try and make it look as if Vice President is democrat. In fact, it is failure of leadership <laughs> on his side, and that is why the issue has persisted. I see, so Solomon, level. you have your time. So clearly, if you look at what has happened in Wale Wale, it's two issues that you can make out of it. First of all, the lack of the ability of the vice president to win the presidency seems to be uh, the conclusion of people around him. You see, Kabiru as an economic advisor in his office would have been better off as an economic advisor at the office of the president. But knowing very well that the vice president has no capacity to win this election, mm -hmm. he quickly decided to find a way of uh, uh, making himself employable after his exit. <laughs> so You know that for sure. <laughs> absolutely. Why would, why would you be an economic advisor at the office of the vice president? And by extension, when he becomes the president, you will still be an economic advisor at the office of the president. Well, uh, people have dreams. No, this and, dream and, is... And, you know, places they want to get to. Your dream must not be uh, smaller than your previous dream. It must always be higher. You understand? Uh -huh. You aspire to go higher than your previous position. You are, you are with the person as a vice president. He now wants to be the president. If you so believe in his ability to win, why would you rush to go to, to, to parliament? Same can be said of the sports person, Gideon Buako. He quickly has also gone to pick form. That he wants to go to parliament. <laughs> a lot of people around the vice president wants to go to parliament because they know. They and they know that the vice president 
will not get above thirteen percent. I keep telling you this. Thirteen percent where? One three percent, thirteen percent in the national election. National election, I'm talking. Oh, that's not possible. No, but, you exaggerate. Ah, but, ah, but, but, but what is the team of your campaign? <laughs> is your campaign team now it is possible? So what are you telling me today that it's not possible? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm saying that it's it's impossible to come to. The How conclusion. is it impossible? No, when no. is campaign team is possible? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, I can't no, understand. I'm, say, I'm saying that. I mean, let's not mislead our viewers. No, that, 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 no, that How can no, you tell no me? Poll, no poll. No poll. So far has No, 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 no. If the polls are things to go by, then we must not go into the election then let's settle on the polls and say that this man has won we are all going to start from point zero <laughs> unless you want to tell me that you have the figures the electoral figures for election 2024 you, you, do, have you do realize that this is a party that scores over six million in the last elections you cannot tell me that they would only score 13 percent of the over 15 million voter roll hey. uh, that's that's it, see, that's impossible you see and an exaggeration on your point. So I'll have you make your point on Wale Wale. Let's leave the numbers the so, way they are. So, 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 so the point still remains. But the, the issue is that the vice president has to be worried. Has to be worried because one is your home region. You, are, you should be able to be on top of the issues. There are a lot of complex issues in this country. You have Mampusi Kusasi to deal with. If you're unable to deal with this simple internal matters, Indeed. how can you assure me that given the opportunity you can solve the problem between Mampusis and Kusasis. The, the, the Gonjas and, and, and Mampusis. Alavanyo, there are issues there. You come to my own downtown, a lot of issues. These are real issues. Not to talk about a sister and someone in your office that you cannot per, uh, 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 persuade one of them to step down for the other to go, that's unfortunate. The second thing is that... That would be uh, interference in is, the election. Which is in, the, uh, in the politics, we do a lot of back, uh, behind the scenes negotiations and lobbying. He knows it. Behind the scenes, you lobby for one to step down. I see. Again, why you, you must you be You think worried? the vice president should have lobbied for one to step down? Uh, he did. Before but the violence. He did, but they believe that he is on his way out of office. You cannot lobby me to go out and be uh, unemployed. You know, you know, you, how do you know that? How do you know he did and, and he wasn't listened to? How do you know that? Uh, but it is so clear. Have you, listened, uh, you read the statement coming from the, the party. The party is so unhappy that you have two days to filing of nominations. You don't have a candidate. What polit serious political party will, 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 will put himself, itself in such a situation? But I mean, my concern is that and that is why I want Ghanaians, because my candidate, Alan, is very serious about this election. Mm -hmm. You have the vice president, who is the chair of the police council. There were 100 and, and, and over police personnel at the polling station, yet they could not very deal well. with the matter. Is it the case that the vice president has mismanaged the Ghana police service to the extent that they're unable to deal with such simple, simple matters? We'll have had, you know, a respond to that uh, question you have just asked, but let's take the conversation to our phone lines now. Richard Kumado is a security consultant. Let's analyze this from a security perspective. Richard, uh, thank you so much for joining us here on Big Issue here on New Day. Uh, let's, let's start off with the Wale Wale incident and how events have turned out uh, post the rerun in that constituency. What are your readings into this as a security analyst? Gentlemen, you'd have to keep quiet for me. I think considering the fact that outcomes of elections in West Africa in particular has become a national security threat, which has led to uh, military takeover and coup d'etat in some extent, uh, we needed to tread cautiously when it comes to elections in Ghana because we are the only country everybody is watching as a beacon of democracy. Uh, there's a history to the Wale Wale issue. If you remember, this is the second time this particular election is being held. And uh, I wasn't so pleased with the outcome of the activities uh, that came out of the results of the elections. And uh, it's an indictment on Dan Parry, who I have not seen for a very long time now. Why am I saying so? We were with Dan Parry at Komewu when we finished the two political parties were clapping for him. We went to Asim North with Dan Parry. The two political parties did not have issue with him. Then there was a Jisu, and Dan Parry did not have an issue. For some time now, I'm not seeing Dan Parry in the public space. I don't know whether after he has been given to the deputy, he will last a little bit. But knowing how high the stakes are in this particular election, people are then going to say Dan Parry did not perform. And I want to see Dan Parry performing few days to the general election where the stakes are high. So in terms of the security breaches, in terms of the issues leading to 
the violence and what we have seen. I think uh, it doesn't look good for the police administration, particularly when they were right. physically and seriously presented at the scene. Uh, Richard, let's look at some of the shortcomings in the lead up uh, to the rerun, especially. What do you see? No, you see, in every election, uh, every election is unique in nature. And our elections, national elections in particular, are run by what we call the CI. The CI is the statutory uh, law that governs election. What it does is that it does three things. One, it defines the election procedure. And number two, it outlines the election processes. And number three, it provides remedies for grievances to be resolved. So here is the thing. Any time the election procedure is circumvented and the processes are contravened, we are likely to face the kind of issue we face at Wale Wale. And that is the root cause of what has happened in Wale Wale. Mm. But I think that we've come a long way uh, to be seeing some of these violence in our elections. And it's not something we should pride ourselves about. I what see. I want to suggest is that Dan Pari must go back to the drawing board and ensure that he's out for the task in December because all eyes are on him and people who hold him accountable should any of these things go wrong, particularly when we have not been able to solve Iowa to West Wagon, which has become a tent on the Ghana police. I immediately, we know that the incumbent member of parliament has withdrawn from the race, hoping that it will bring some peace and finality to the issue in Wale Wale at the moment. Uh, can the police relax because, you know, uh, a, a candidate has pulled out? No, there are two things involved here. The nature of our politics in Ghana is such that people do not really forgive. And considering the fact that the affirmative action there has been on the drawing board for years and it has just been passed, the women groups in Ghana will not take it kindly with the vice president, particularly when his boy is involved. And people will see that this is masculinity against women. And the women groups within those areas, particularly at the northern side where we have pockets of issues, distancing, religion and politics is coming into the bin. It's going to be a security red flag that we need to watch, not just for the novel, uh, but to go beyond that. But mm. I think that politically and nationally and leadership, uh, the vice president office and the office of the president will need to do a little bit more to water down uh, whatever has been the grievances. Other than that, he step it down. It's not a panacea for peace to prevail. And foreign politics to this country from 1992, I can tell you that political security risk assessment has been some of the things that have thrown out many of the underlying grievances we have for which we have not been able to resolve. And the peace council is looking at somebody who cannot face elections or election-related grievances in this country. Very well, Richard. We'll leave it here. Hopefully, uh, Dampari and his people will go back to the drawing board. There are many who have said this is only a tip of the iceberg, like Solomon alluded to over here. Uh, thank you so much. Richard Kumado is a security consultant. Let's come back to the studio. Still with me here, uh, uh, Fad uh, Usman, King Fad Usman. He's to my immediate right. He's a member of the NPP's National Communications Team. Right opposite me is uh, Solomon Ous, who is also senior comms member for Movement for Change. And then Edem Agbana is presidential. Uh, he is, perhaps it is the future. I, I have just I have just spoken into your video, but he's he NBC. in my, my church, youth ministry. He's afraid. He's afraid. I want to be MP. Just like how they Yes, he's 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 the NBC. He's the NBC. Just like the little high. Oh, but I mean, he's no. Hang on, let's not go there. But he's got years ahead of him to 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 make that possible. What's wrong in that? having dresses. But I'm not done talking. ARS ARS youth ministry. Eric, let me let me introduce you. Eric Edemagbana is NBC. DC parliamentary candidate for K2 North, and uh, he hopes to uh, succeed uh, um, Dr. Uh, James Kluche Avedi, indeed. Fantastic man. Absolutely, I agree with you. Uh, but let, let's come back to the conversation. Yes. The security analyst says that, and Fad, I think Solomon has made a point. Adam, you've come in already, so let me take it to Fad. Uh, he's made the point that, look, even if the candidate has pulled out, you don't think this is over. Is the party going to take any steps beyond deciding who would be candidates in the meeting today? I believe, I don't know what to happen at the meeting, but then from what we are hearing, I'm, certainly there will be some reconciliation. It's not going to be just like a decision being made and allow this person to run. So I think it's something we should allow the party to do. And we all know that this is the home of our candidate, of the leader of our party. So we will, not, we will, not, we will do everything to, to salvage the, the situation at hand. We will do everything in our power 
to solve the challenges that we face currently within the Wale Wale constituency because we have to win Wale Wale. You, it's a must. Uh, but you knew that and you didn't we work to towards not. it. You elections, knew that this is the, uh, uh, you know, your we, candidate's hometown. You knew that there were, you know, events that, that were leading what, up to was, violence in that, that was area. It was important we allowed the fair and democratic processes to take its course. So your party, you know, party folk in that area didn't listen to you. That's what no, you're you telling us. You see, as humans, as you cannot control everybody. If you listen to, <coughs> as Adam indicated here, and I'm very happy he gave some genesis to the story. You see, at one breath, he tells us that Dr. Ka uh, Mahama was sacked from the office of the yes. vice president. Three months at one, ago. At one point, he says that. And at the other breath, he says that the, the incumbent MP is being pressured. You see, so I find it very difficult no, to find, I didn't say that. To find no, the but, grounds but, between these two statements. You see, but, no, but I'm even and wondering is, if he said is. both things. How are they connected? They, they are, are not they, connected in any way. So meaning that, the, meaning that the person involved, the office of the vice president, decided to stay away from this contest. It has, it has taken this dimension, unfortunately, we do condemn. Father, please, I don't understand please. your rationalization. No, is, no, no. No, 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 hang oh, on. No, I, <laughs> Adam, why, why? You can't give me 30 you seconds. See, you, see, you, you see, the most important thing is that <laughs> the vice president's office, or the person of the vice president, Dr. Alaj Mahmoud Mahomia, has from the onset of, of, of this contest, decided to stay neutral. And that's the very good thing. Yeah. In as much as there have been some backlashes, some difficulties within the constituency, I think what is fair is that the person involved, that is the hometown oh, of, the, of our leader, Dr. Mahmoud Bormir, decided deciding to stay away from this contest is one thing we need to commend him for. We're and also we're allow to, the next we're have to meeting, move on to our next topic, meeting so that will happen uh, today, meeting that will happen today to also give some finality to the issues. Very well. Quickly, ask a question. When I was making a, the submission on, I just wanted to give this. No one beat us in unleashing violence. Mahama won and this MPP. Did you this is not. Story? I see. Oh, no, this this is not coming from me. This is not coming from me. Okay. No, hang on. That, that's, that's the headline you have just read. Yes. I, I wish. I wish you could read it. Give us the context. In details, they are there. So, so there are a lot of violence no. issues that will go there. But no, then, hang on. For the sake of time. And Adam, let me just make the point that what you have just read. I've seen the story. It's just the headline. You haven't given us the context. So don't mislead my viewers. I'm not misleading No, hang on. It's it is a headline. It's statement coming from John Mahama. It is a headline. And the headline is made out of made out of Oh no. It doesn't give us context. Oh no, you are a journalist. That's why I'm a journalist. That's why I'm telling you. Made out of out of the context, right? So if the context is not associated, it will mislead my viewers, and I don't want that. So we'll strike that out. Oh. No, I, well, unless that's, that's, we don't have time to read the well, whole thing either. Yeah, that's, Adam, that's, quickly, you make the point. To, Please uh, don't to, touch on this headline. No, 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 yeah, two yeah. things, two things. Just two, two quick things. One, when you go to Wale Wale, everyone in Wale Wale, the local media, the constituents, were well aware that Dr. Baumia preferred Hadia uh, uh, Lariba. In the, in the, in the, the, no, the Wale Wale locals. Oh, you see, allow me land. What's from all that, this? Is it, fat, fat, oh, no, no, no. No, that, that, no I'm no, the no, only one allowed to interject. Right, yeah. So, it's so, Kemini. But for the woman to even lose, despite sharing, look, the amount of money the MP shared as compared it's to allegation. what Dr. Dr. Mahama gave. And then no, did you, you see, get some of them? We are all, play, How are all players in the industry. We know, know what no, happened. Fat, she allowed me land. Please let him talk. And the fact that she is the sister. Exactly, that's what I'm asking. She is the sister of the vice president, and she still lost. To tell you that even in his home constituency, we don't know man, for sure if any candidate man, no. lost. Adam, Adam, no, ah, no I'm, the I, first I'm premise. going to submit. No, she you. lost the first time before she went to court. Uh -huh. I'm even not talking, I'm not even talking about, about that. This the one was not the rerun was not declared. Okay. I'm talking about the primaries, okay. the, the, the first yeah. primaries, the main yeah. primaries, the one organized in January. Yeah, she lost mm -hmm. despite sharing more oh. items. She lost despite a linkage to the vice president, and so. Let's let's not even so, go so there. So, Adam, here's my number question. Two. Before you make the number two, you go I don't like number two, number two about the balance two. issue. No, I before like you go two. on to number two, yes. how do you know that she shared huge sums of money? Oh, but <laughs> in every election. No, fact, no heckling. Why? I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But Wali Wali, we have NDC members there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have delegates that usually after elections, they will say, this person gave this, this that person gave this. So you heard from delegates? You can delegates. confirm. Yes. Okay. And as a serious party, as a serious as a serious party, as a serious party, determined to win the Wale Wale seat. Indeed, we had interest that we had intel of what, what was happening in the MPP. And so, let's not even Let, go there. Let's, let's wrap Issue up. About so you see, I don't like this uh, attempt to do equalization. Because if you want to talk about violence, look, in the history of Ghana since 92, no presidential candidate 
has carried a violent attack more than Nana Dodanko Akufado, who himself said, Etiwaka Echomu Bibikaka. In your party that you want us to discuss, there was a situation where even a regional chairman or a relative, there was pouring of acid that even led to the death of somebody. Very well. But all these issues. Let so you don't even let's, have to get into a conversation on violence. Let's move on violence. quickly. Adam, I'm, your I'm, also, I'm also going to strike out something stand. you said because no. you haven't <laughs> been able to provide proof for it. That uh, but you uh, are not uh, aware. Bazuera, I'm not aware. That which one? Uh, she just... shared huge sums of money and she still lost. Oh, so that's what so that one is public. No, knowledge. no, no, no. If you don't again, want me to we say it on your set, no problem. But I'm saying that the people watching us from Wale Wale, and look, sometimes I'm urging you the media. To go behind even the headlines and investigate. No, when we see on Sunday, people, those we will, who were arrested, we tell story. those who were arrested, I can tell you on your set and the IGP, the people in the police can take me on. I can tell you that as of this morning that I'm on your set, those arrested for the violence, and I have videos of the violence clashes and the shootings, the AK 47s, and all the weapons. What, I have what videos has happened here. to those who were arrested? As we speak today, those who were arrested. They are no more in police custody. Yeah, but they will have to give them bail. They are no more in police custody. But because they've been There is no bail. record of any of them being granted bail. They have been oh, released. Oh, I see. No, you see? I see. And that is why we are telling the NPP, and we are telling Ghanaians that we in the NDC, we are ready for peace. Mm -hmm. We will not go and incite violence. But we will not sit aloof and watch you misbehave. When you bring it on, we will protect the ballot, we will protect the votes. And that is what we are interested in. So... The police service must not be biased or partial in the discharge of their duties. If in the let's, face let's of let's all Solomon, this that happened in Waliwali, Wali, with all the video evidence <laughs> as we speak, none of the people you arrested in Waliwali Wali on Sunday is still in police custody. Very well, Adam. We, 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 we get the point. I mean, but Fad, uh, there's you no time. You can't react like to that. Solomon, yeah, no. quickly. So uh, clearly between the NDC and the NPP, we are discussing violence. One is just like the Galam says, where one is saying, we didn't leave you at a uh, brownish water. Violence, violence, it means that Ghana has to move beyond this theopoly <laughs> and then settle on an independent can and that will restore sanity into Very the system well. for every Ghanaian to have peace of mind. In terms of whether or not the vice president has failed, clearly it's an ample testimony that he was given the test case to deal with Wale Wale. Uh -huh. He has failed woefully. And if I were him, he would quickly go back to the electoral commission and take back his form. <laughs> Take back the forms. No, no, fine, fine. Let, let's tell about it. Take back the forms. <laughs> so, but that's a profound advice. Just like Asam Wajan has done. It. You see, it is. I not see you're not fairly, doing. you're fairly maximizing your points. So that's that's. No, but that's so a, that's so a, that's so a that, profound I mean, advice. When, when you withdraw, it right? saves everyone. Then the that's MPP profound. can so reorganize yeah. themselves and come back. And then we can all move. After all, once an elephant, always an elephant. When it turns, when it turns, new patriotic party. We would, would have to move on to other topics, okay. gentlemen. Uh, Bafad, you, uh, you and I'm your sorry, party, yeah. I know there are a lot of things that you need to react to. But you people too should stop pulling uh, ballot papers. We saw that in Parliament as well, and then we are chewing seeing that today. You like chewing well. it too much. Yeah, like anyway, we'll, we'll, no, no, no. I'm not going. I'm not going. Uh, I mean, like Miracle said, we'll laugh. We'll add laughing emojis it's, to it. It's, so it's, I hope that it's on record that we've added laughing emojis to what I have just said. Yeah. But let's move on to Galamsey. Yes. The other point is that yeah. while everybody is condemning, uh, you know, unethical small-scale mining, illegal mining in this country. Your running mate then goes out to go and say you now give people chamfan. The same chamfan we are complaining about. You give them, you give them a, a equipment to to mine even even further. Why? Is that what he said? No, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I said he, I heard him saying excavators. I don't, I, didn't, I don't think he said chamfans. So uh, but whether no, excavators can, no, 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 or not. Can correct that. Uh, no, I I I I disagree with you. No, you uh, said, you said uh, Hang on, let's let's take a listen. Can, 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 let's take a listen quickly. We will not shoot anyone. We will give everyone's excavator to them. You will be allowed to work on your concession. This will ensure that people in the town can fend for themselves. It is not true that Dr. Bahamia will collapse more skill mining. What we are against is mining on water bodies. Everyone will get some work to do. Everyone will be able to provide for themselves. 
So, so I mean, in this video, he says excavators, but we know that he said also mentioned Shamfang. No, in, not, not in this video. Okay. And I, um, in, uh, I have not seen that video. You, no, but but so here's the point I'm making. Whether Shamfang or excavators, no. it seems very insensitive for your candidate to stand there and make no, promises to. I just wanted us to establish the fact that he made mention of excavators, not Shamfang, but Shamfang oh, no, no, itself no. is is not accepted. In any part of this country. Uh, but your running mate didn't know that. In the video we have excavators. played. Because I know that in the story that we have done, he mentions Shamfang. So you have those, you have we, that video? I would have my producers I'll look for it, but I, I, I won't take it back, no back problem, once no we have no problem, reported no on it. So you no explain problem. to Thank me why much. your candidates at this you know, very time that everybody is speaking against unethical mining and illegal mining, he's standing on a, on a platform and encouraging it. I believe. Uh, what you've shown so far and what I had, nowhere in the statement did he say we are going to encourage Galamse. Nowhere. Let's establish the fact. He said they are going to give people back their excavators to go back and mine. You see, we do admit that the issue of Galamse had become a, a national issue. We are all speaking. There have been a lot of concerns from organizations and union groups and all those matters in these discussions. It's, it's a fight with, with we have to acknowledge that from the efforts we put up when we took over in 2017 and looking at the challenges we, we, we were confronted with and looking at previous efforts by previous governments, look, if you look at the results so far, it has not been that much successful. So sometimes you need to look beyond <coughs> the solutions you've already implemented mm. to see how best you can look out for other sustainable ways of dealing with the problem. But it's a problem if we want to say that let's ban mining and in its entire form that one is a different discussion i don't think we've, we've gotten to that point yet that we will start to make the calls that in this country from from now to let's say 2036 let's stop all forms of mining in this country i don't think that's the discussion we're having we are trying to see how best we can look out for the best ways of mining that's sustainable mining and also environmentally friendly mining mm. it's important that we also say this Government efforts in the past, or let me even say this, some of the causes of these illegal activities, yes, have been attributed to economic challenges or economic factors, unemployment and, and also poverty in some areas. There are so social factors too. And the one factor that has also come up is the institutional factors. Mm -hmm. That's the licensing regimes over yeah. the years. So it, it's one of the main reasons we are saying that if we get the opportunity to continue with the administration of this country, we are going to change the licensing regimes of mining activities in this country. As we speak, good enough, the current president, His Excellency Nana Adonko Kufuado, has decentralized the, the, the mining activities or the mining op, uh, administration in this country to the regional level. As a last two months or so, one in central region, that is the Akimoda Mining Regional Office was, was commissioned. Uh -huh. As we speak next month, the Ashanti <coughs> Regional one will be also commissioned. We are trying to decentralize all the operations of these bodies who regulate the mining activities to have a, a more robust monitoring mechanisms in dealing with the challenges. The challenges are there. We, are, we have to look at the best ways to have mining in this and country. For seven years, you haven't you been see, able to look at the best ways. There were, there were military actions within the past seven years, and it has not yielded that much of results. There have been alternative livelihood programs. You see, in, in economics, if you, if you want to look out for any alternative livelihood program, first thing is that what you are offering economically, is it viable? to replace what they were getting from their mining activities. If it is not viable, economically viable, definitely they'll go back to their mining activities again. So it is only fair we have a proper way of mining, mm. licensing regimes, monitoring mechanisms to deal with the challenges at hand. I see. Oh, so, if, so, so if despite the NPP's promise to the Ghanaian people, including the one that the president decided to wager his job and say uh, if he's not able to deal with it, he would... Uh, quit as president. I don't think, I don't mean he said he will quit as president. He said he, I'm putting my presidency Now, if you put your line. presidency on the line, what does and, it mean? And, Fad, please. And he paid please. for it. No, he Fad, for it. he hasn't paid for he it. Paid he got a second it. term because the Ghanaian dearly. people thought that, he, he you paid. know, something would, no, let me make my right, point right. so that I don't become an advocate this morning, <laughs> right? The point I'm making is that if the NPP has been unable to deal with this and it's only got worse, how would you describe that? You see, 
I have I've already made mention some of the some of the actions being taken by this government. Yeah, but it hasn't worked. It, you haven't been able and, to deal with it. It's got see, worse. Have you fight, seen our water bodies? To fight bodies? this canker, to fight this canker, it's it's more of a collective responsibility. The media had did a very well in the first phase of the fight. You see, unfortunately, in 2020, we had people who matters well in the mining industry. Uh -huh. Somebody like Dr. Tony Aban. The former chief executive of Minerals Commission. Yeah, Tony Obin. To, uh, Tony Obin going to mining areas, promising them as 2020 that if the NDC won power in 2021, they will allow them to go back. So you look at something collective effort. When something is collective no, effort. No, no, Fad, you don't me, have a response no, for me, and that's no, okay. No, I'm just giving, I'm just making a quick submission on this issue. So if you are fighting a situation like this okay. at that level, and you have people <clears throat> who matters in the industry, Going down there to make such promises, it becomes it becomes very difficult to fight it. Is at it that much level. more difficult see, than and, and when the no, 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 fact, please, please, is it much more difficult than uh, when your own minister decides to do uh, investigative work and hands it over to you, naming people within your own government mm -hmm. that are allegedly involved in Galamse and nothing Professor happened? Frimpons, no, hang on, Frimpons. I'm not done. Is it much more than when uh, 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 you know you are told that? So, so and so person from an investigative journalist, so and so person is taking money from people and giving them concessions to go and mine, allowing them to do things. Uh, please, uh, uh, no, let's be honest. Adam, go on. Oh, I thought you were going well, to okay, so um, let you, me say, you I think that it's important for us to say that this government has lost the fight against illegal mining or Galamse completely. And the outcome of that scam of a fight that they put up and added so much PR as the extent of pollution that we see in our rivers today. And that is why I am happy that right here at CV3, we can produce videos of some of the, the popular water bodies proud to their fight in 2017 and what it is looking like today. The result of the scam of a fight is the fact that as we speak, the Ghana Water Company is projecting that if illegal mining continues at this space, by 2030, we will be importing water. It is a fact that even Occupy Ghana, a group we have known so closely aligned to the NPP in the past and now, is also out calling on government to take pragmatic steps to fight Galamse. The truth is that Dr. Baumia and Nanat Adodankwa Akufado have failed the fight against Galamse. But why are we here? We are here because <clears throat> instead of fighting illegal mining, it became an avenue for top officials of the NPP and members of the government to loot. Are you aware that this government spent millions of dollars on a supposed drone system or mechanism to monitor and arrest illegal mining? Millions of dollars. What happened to those drones? How come you had the drones, you have the soldiers, and yet the distraction to the environment and illegal mining is at a heightened level, never seen before in this country, if indeed you are investing in those things. Mm. Again, this government and then we should be winding seized down. equipment from Galamseas and distributed them to their members, seized concessions and gave them to people within the party, uh, people see, within they, the government. The excavators they seized. We, yes. don't, we don't have evidence they shared it to their members. Where are the excavators? Okay. Well, we're in this that, that's a fair question, but and to say they will share them then to I'm their members. You, so I'm asking first, where are the excavators? Uh -huh. And number two, away from even asking where the excavators are, in the inter-ministerial committee reports, their own committee that established by the president, there was a report set up to investigate illegal mining. Uh -huh. And in that report, the reason why Professor Frimpong Barton, I believe I got the name right, yes. was sacked, and he wrote a lengthy letter explaining why he was dismissed from government, is that members of Very government well. 
lack the political will to fight Galamse because they were the biggest beneficiaries. But we are proposing that, look, what is even more serious is the statement made by Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, the vice mm -hmm. presidential candidate of the MPP, the man whose God sleeps at night. Very well. Adam, that's your last one on it. He said mm -hmm. that it is not true that Dr. Baumia will come and fight Galamse. And when they come... He said that. No, the video we, the we, video is we there, saw. He that said they will that. give the excavators to sure. them, to small-scale miners. To get, but we are proposing that illegal mining is bad. It is destroying the country. What can we do? In our manifesto, resetting Ghana manifesto, we are proposing that let us have regulations where you empower what we call community mining. So you have people forming groups in communities. You regulate the activity because you see, it is not like none of the parties. And, and we are not against learn. mining. You should learn. All we are saying is that those who do it illegally, using chemicals that they are not supposed to use, they are destroying our water bodies well. and destroying the environment. So regulate them. <laughs> so put them into community mining and support them to do legal, no, to no do heckling, environmentally right. friendly, small-scale mining. And that is what the NDC well. is proposing. But as for the Hang MPP, on. like Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, the man who's Very well. Adam, at Adam, we'll have to move from you. In fact, I'll MPP give you the last word on Galaxy. But let's move Galaxy. on to Solomon. Uh, Solomon, I see you have also, you know, flipped your GTP. Absolutely. To... I mean, that is that is what the country needs. Mm. Uh, the solutions are here. Alan, on page 77, I'm sure you have a GTP. You mm -hmm. go through and you see that it solves the problems. What we are dealing with is, is purely lack of uh, the political world to deal with it. If the president, together with people in authority, decide today, today, that we are no more interested in Galamse. It will cease within the next week. Because Galamse is not something that is done in secrecy. It's an open activity. Over the weekend, I, I went to Ayamfori, Dunkwa, and so on and so forth. And all the Galamse sites that I saw, interestingly, 10 meters away from the Galamse site, you will mm -hmm. see a police barrier. So I was asking myself whether these barriers were put there for them to, as it were, uh, uh, supervise the, the Galamse, or to Very make well. sure that daily sales are not compromised. Other than that, why would there be a Galamse and police will be there looking on concern? And that is why Alan is saying that the laws of the land must work. Yeah. Again, he's saying that we should not entrust all our mineral resources in the president. Mm. We must amend Article 2576 to make chiefs or the traditional authorities called trustees so that it does not become the only the president who has that authority. Very well. I, I'm mm -hmm. going to come back to you so you finish that yeah. point. Then I give uh, the last word on this Galamse topic. Uh, but let's move on to the phone lines. Bismarck Owusu-Norte is Executive Director for Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. We all know uh, that uh, this is impacting our ability uh, to have healthy food in this country and then also to be able to grow the food in the first place. Uh, let's talk to uh, Bismarck at this moment. B Bismarck, good morning to you. And, and thank you so much for joining us here on Big Issues on New Day. Uh, you have also released a statement very concerned about the uh, Galamse menace in this country. Talk to us about why it's so important to you as peasant farmers. It would appear Bismarck is no longer on the phone lines. But so, Solomon, you have the time. You finish the point so, and then we so can wrap up. Then, when we make the chiefs co trustees, it will help. When we decide to enforce the laws. Uh, the same chiefs we've been complaining about that are part of the problem. I don't see why anybody should complain about chiefs because they don't have the authority. I mean, we have a commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces being the president. If someone is perpetuating an illegality, you have every right to arrest that chief. You understand? I mean, it doesn't it surprise you. In, indeed, I'm going to go back to the phone lines now. Bismarck, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Very well. I, I want to hear from you how impacted you are by the menace of Galamse in this country. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, as we highlighted in our first week, the issue of Galamse is having a very uh, devastating effect on our uh, production of farming. Uh, I spoke about the fact that, uh, one, we are losing our farmlands to the activities of these galaxies. So uh, there are a lot of instances where they come to these farms, they, 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 they attempt to buy uh, some of the farms from the farmers. Uh, where the farmers refuse, they find other means to take over the farms from the farmers. So gradually, we've lost a lot of farms, and the latest report I, I, I saw indicated that we've lost 
close to over 1.2 million hectares of land to these guarantees. The second part is that, apart from the farmland that we have lost, is we are also losing the water bodies that we use for our farming uh, activities. So, you know, a lot of our farmers rely on uh, the water bodies that flows across their farms. There are instances to where there are some irrigation sites where we rely on those water bodies. Uh, as I'm talking to you now, a lot of these sites have been polluted with uh, chemicals and the waters are very turbid that the farmers cannot use. The third point is that we, we have also lost a lot of our youth. Uh, normally, we would have been able to get access to youth to either help in the farm that provide labor or even take over the farming from our uh, aging families. Uh, it got to a point that we were thinking that we were losing the youth to uh, three cities because we were in school. Apparently, that is not the case. All the youth are moving to the guarantee areas to go and look for uh, quick money at the expense of other things, including farming. So based on all these three, and uh, I recently heard that in addition to to that, because of the destruction of our forest, it has affected the climate. And that's one of the reasons why uh, currently we have been having some uh, very unpredictable rainfall. So all these factors are contributing to uh, having us have very low production. And that's the danger that we are, we are talking about. Because if nothing drastic is done, then I'm afraid in the next few years, we'll gradually lose all our farmlands, all the water bodies will be destroyed, uh, I, I, the youth will not be interested in farming, mm. and the effect is that we cannot produce enough to feed ourselves. Absolutely. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, that. Bismarck. Uh, already our cocoa farmers are complaining about yield and the quality of the soil. But thank you so much. Bismarck Owusu-Norte is Executive Director of the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. In uh, fact, this one came from our viewer, Stephen Peng Nwa, who says that, are you aware that the Vice President was in Waliwali on Sunday? Uh, to meet both candidates but failed to resolve the problem and he wants to preside over Ghana. Uh, the, what he adds, I cannot add, but that is the comment coming from mm -hmm. somebody yes, somebody, well, somebody well, in Wa, well, yeah, well, to well, deal with the issue. Fad, Fad, you know, I promised that you would have the last word well, on Galam okay. oh. we, we don't have time, so but the, because the, the, the problem is that no, Alan is filing his I was going to say that for you, but no. you hang on. Let's Fad make the point and then we'll say that. <laughs> Fad, no. Fad, you have 30 seconds. Please make, make your point on Galam. Say so it's not like you. Go on. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. You see, as I indicated earlier, and I think my brother them also had also made that same position. Uh -huh. That we are not saying that we should not, they shouldn't mind. But we should understand that there should be a regime or a licensing processes or a licensing regime that will have to deal, fish out all these illegal miners. Right. So it is important that if we are not, if we are not saying, let's ban, give, uh, put a ban on mining activities entirely. Very well. Then we should have to see how best we can ensure sustainable my, mining my, my and mining that will not distract our environment. My I producers say uh, 30 seconds is up, but things to look out for today. Alan Kojo Chairman Ting will be filing his nomination at the Electoral Commission today. We'll bring you uh, updates here on TV3. Uh, we also know that the NPP's National Executive Committee will be meeting over the Wale Wale issue this morning. We'll bring you updates as well. Adam, uh, when is the demo? Well, um, on the uh, 17th, all of us in the NDC will demonstrate in the various uh, electoral commission offices uh, across the regions. We believe that there must be an audit, a proper audit of the register Indeed. because what the Electoral Commission is doing currently is very dangerous to our Ed democracy. Adam, that's all we have time no, for. But, it's, it's but Ed Adam Agbana is NDC parliamentary candidate for K2 North. Uh, Solomon Owusu is senior comms member for Movement for Change. And Kim Fad Osman is member for the NPP National Communication Team. Gentlemen, I'm so grateful for your time. I know that we've not had a lot of time to digest a lot of the issues. We'll do that another time. Maybe not with me. I'm Kemeni Amano. Bye-bye.